Hi there kids, it's me again, Teacher Danny, bringing you wonderful adventure time in this lesson for today. Hulk smash! Living things such as human, animal, and plants have common characteristics. Now we had mentioned that they all have lives since they are called living things. And not just that, they are able to grow, live and die in this earth, and they are able to reproduce. Human, with its male and its female, can reproduce to make their own babies, or we call it as their offspring. Now, animals can make families too, such as birds, which they and I can lay eggs, and then later on will become chicks and the other animals such as the fishes, reptiles, the amphibians would also uh, produce their offspring. And let's not forget mammals like us, humans, just like what we have mentioned, can also give birth to their babies. But how about plants? Have you ever wondered how plants reproduce? And now I'm very excited to tell you that for today, we will talk more about how these plants grow. Don't forget to take down notes of the important details of our lesson for today. Now let's get moving! garden with such beautiful flowers and very nice landscaping with all the bees and butterflies roaming around. But just as I thought, I also have my garden which I had posted in my previous vlog. I'm going to post the link here so you can re-watch the video after this. And going back to the topic, now most of the plants that you might know are flowering plants such as the roses, some flowers, the gumamela or the hibiscus, our national flower which is sampaguita which has a very fragrant smell. These are very known plants because they are flowering. Now most of these plants around us are called angiosperm. Why are they called angiosperm? Again, because they are all flowering plants. But, just like what I've told you, I am also a plant lover, or what they call plantito. <laughs> but most of my plants are gymnosperm. So what do you think gymnosperms are? If angiosperms are flowering, its opposite is gymnosperm. Did you get it? Good! <laughs> Gymnosperms are non-flowering plants. Have you seen one grow without flowering flowers? This is a side thought, because almost 90% in the plant kingdom are angiosperm, or what we call the flowering plants. Now these are the plants which have a seed inside. These seeds are found inside the ovary of the flower. But how about the gymnosperms? Since we had mentioned that they are non-flowering plants, they don't have flower or ovary to contain the seeds. Do you know where the seeds are found? Yes, that is right. For gymnosperms, their seeds are exposed whether on the leaves or on its top part or its bottom part. They are not contained in the ovary of the plant. Science like the sagopalm, conifers like the pine trees, netopites like paddy oats, and ginkgo like the ginkgo biloba are some of the examples of gymnosperms. I think you're very excited to see more of these plants. But 
I think it would be better if we're going to discuss first how these plants create their seed. How male flowers are connected with female flowers through pollination. So to give you more details about it, watch this video I'm prepared. Plants reproduce through different methods. They reproduce sexually through seeds and asexually through stems, roots or leaves of the plants. Through reproduction, plants pass on their characteristic traits from one generation to another. This is termed as inheritance of traits. Thus, a mango seed grows into a mango plant and a potato plant grows from a potato tuber. Plants reproduce sexually through flowers, which are the reproductive parts of a plant. The pollen grains produced by the anther of the stamen are transferred to the stigma of the female part, that is, carpal of the flower. Yes, that is true. Flowers also have male and female. Now, to distinguish both, male flowers have common parts such as the filament and the anther, which pollen grains are produced, and the female flowers have the stigma, the style, and the ovary where the seeds are made. This process is called pollination. After pollination, the pollen grains move towards the ovary and fuse with the ovules in the ovary. This process is called fertilization. The fertilized ovules become the seeds and the ovary develops into a fruit. Seed dispersal Dispersal of seeds gives all the seedlings a fair chance to grow. The process of scattering of seeds over long distances is known as seed dispersal. Nature has brought about seed dispersal so that more and more plants can grow over large distances and all living things can get food and other benefits from them. We know that plants cannot move from where they are rooted. Then, how do seeds travel over large distances? Agents of seed dispersal Seeds get disposed by various agents like wind, water, animals. These are known as agents of dispersal. Some plants also employ the method of explosion of fruits. Wind Seeds dispersed by wind are small and light. Some are hairy, example, cotton seeds and dandelion. Seeds of drumstick and madumalaki have thin, tapery wings. We often see them floating in the air. Water Plants that grow near or in water bodies disperse their seeds through water. The fruits of lotus and water lily have small hollow spaces that enable them to float on water. Coconuts have a fibrous covering that make it light. The ripe coconuts which fall naturally into water are carried to far off lands. Animals Fleshy and juicy fruits like mango, guava, 
watermelon and papaya are eaten by man and some other animals. The seeds are thrown away after eating and thus dispersed. Birds eat the fruits of banyan, fig and people trees. They swallow the seeds along with the fruits. These seeds come out with the bird droppings. The fruits of caltrop, shaft flower and mimosa have thorns and spines. The seeds of the tiger claw plant have hooks or burrs. These stick onto the fur or skin of the animals and even on our clothes and hair. Explosion of fruits. Some fruits burst open on ripening and scatter their seeds. Balsam, pea, ladyfinger, geranium, mustard and touch-me-not plants disperse their seeds in this way. A seed is generally hard and has a pore through which it absorbs water. It has an outer covering called the seed coat. The seed coat protects the seed from injury or water loss. Enclosed by the seed coat, there are structures called seed leaves or cotyledons and an embryo. The cotyledons store food and provide nutrients to the embryo. A seed may have one or two cotyledons. Seeds with one cotyledon are called monocot seeds. Some monocot seeds are wheat, barley, maize, rice, etc. Seeds with two cotyledons are called dicot seeds. Some dicot seeds are pea, bean, gram, etc. Germination The growth of a seed into a young plant is called germination. A seed germinates only when the conditions are favorable. It needs the presence of water, oxygen, warmth, and sunlight to germinate. Stages of germination The seed absorbs water and swells up. As the seed swells up, the seed coat splits. This stage is called the sprouting stage. This white structure grows into root. The root grows downward into the ground and anchors the seed in place. It is only then that the shoot begins to grow. Germination of a dicot seed It occurs in two ways. 1. Germination in pea seed Here the seed leaves remain inside the seed and under the soil whereas shoot grows upwards. Once the stored food supply is over, the seed leaves dry out. 2. Germination of bean seed Here, the growing shoot pulls the seed leaves out of the seed coat and above the soil. These seed leaves are the first leaves for these plants. Germination of a monocot seed Germination of corn seed Here, many roots grow from the base of the shoot to prevent the tall plant with a thin stem from being blown over. 
there is only one seed lead in these plants. Seeds don't start germinating the moment they detach from the parent plant. Sometimes they remain dormant, that is, inactive for months, even years. They start germinating only when conditions are favorable for the seed to grow. Asexual reproduction in plants. Plants also reproduce asexually, that is, without seeds. This process of growing plants from other parts of the plant, like stem, root, leaves, is called vegetative propagation. It occurs naturally or can be induced by man. Natural Vegetative Propagation In nature, vegetative propagation occurs through stem, leaves and roots. Following are some examples. Stem Rhizome in ginger Runner in strawberry Stolen in jasmine and tuber in potato give rise to new plants. Leaf Base of the leaf of bulbil swells to form a bulb that grows into a new plant. Leaf of bryophyllum grows new shoots from the edge of the leaf. Root In sweet potato, the plant arises from the root tuber. Artificial Vegetative Propagation Man has used various methods of vegetative propagation to grow new plants in huge numbers. Grafting is one such method used in the commercial growth of plants like rose, avocado, apple, pear and peach. In grafting, the shoot, bud or twig of a desired plant is placed on the stem of another plant. This way, their tissues join together. Grafting combines the qualities of flowering or fruiting of one plant with the other. Rose plants that produce double colored flowers such as yellow and orange roses are usually grown through grafting. Now to sum up, plants are also like human beings. They also reproduce just like us. They have male or female parts, or they even have both. And they reproduce by means of pollination or even self-pollination. Let us also not forget that plants grow in two means, the sexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Now, would you like to see some plants grow? Watch this!
episode for today. I hope you had a good time and don't forget to like and subscribe and share what you've learned for this day.